Hey, all you cats and kittens. Adam Ray here, host of the About Last Night podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate it. YouTube, subscribe to the ALN podcast page. Do it on Spotify and iTunes and hit us up on Instagram and Twitter at ALN Podcast to be up to date with all the upcoming episodes, clips. We got Gene Smart from Hacks coming up, Rick Glassman from Take Your Shoes Off, Adam Devine from everything. Uh, Make sure you're up to date with all of that fun. Speaking of fun, I'm on tour July 7th through the 10th at the Laugh Factory at the Tropicana in Las Vegas, baby. Coming back to Vegas July 7th through the 10th. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. July 20th through the 22nd, I'm on the road with Sal Volcano from Impractical Jokers in Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver. July 20th through the 22nd. Tickets at SalVolcanoComedy.com. And then July 29th, 30th, and 31st in La Jolla at the San Diego Comedy Store in La Jolla, San Diego, California. Come out and see me, AdamRayComedy.com for tickets. All your merch is at adamraycomedy.com. My specials are on my YouTube page, live from San Francisco and live from Madison that just dropped. Go check them out on my YouTube page and support me, Adam Ray Comedy, on Twitter and Instagram. Come out and see me live. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Today's episode is a banger. The host of the Honeydew Podcast, he's a great comic. Go see him on the road. One of the best in the biz. His laugh is like nothing you've ever heard before, and today was a fun one. So enjoy this special episode of the About Last Night Podcast with the man, Ryan Sickler. You also look like a guy that would maybe duck on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that about anybody. <laughs> you and I just eat lunch. Like, look at this motherfucker over here. Looks like he hunts duck. <laughs> hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. If you can hear this song, then you know that Ryan Sickler's here. Because when you think of fucking 80s pop roller skating DJ tunes, you think of Ryan Sickler. Fuck yeah. Uh, I still roller skate. Do you really? I'm about to be 50 in March. I'm out there with my daughter all the time, yeah. First of all, welcome back to the show. Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. You don't even look close to 50. (laughs) Get the fuck out at like 60. (laughs) No, dude. Maybe the gray, but like there's certain people that start to let the gray settle in and then they just shape it well. If I I dyed my shit... uh, Maybe it would take off a handful of years, but I don't know. Do you feel that. 50? I'm turning 40 no, well, tomorrow. Congrats, yeah, by the way. I guess. Um, I don't. I, I, yes and no. Let me let me go back. I feel, I always say I feel like I'm 25, 27. Yeah. I feel like I'm in that zone. Until you do um, what activity? But now my back, I just, I got a tear in a disc, so I got to go <laughs> get a treatment for that. I got fucking trigger finger. Yeah. I'm going to put this on for you. Oh, okay. What? You know what trigger finger is? No. It gets stuck, locked, like a tr- your trigger finger. W- ready? Oh, fuck, dude. Look at that knot, dude. It hurts so goddamn bad. So I got to go get that fucking fixed. <laughs> so do I feel 50? Sometimes. But <laughs> <laughs> well, my finger doesn't work, you know? How do you get trigger finger? It can happen and a bunch of... I don't know how I did this. I think if I'm going through my research, uh, I'm a single dad. Yeah. And... I have an ego when it comes to carrying groceries, and I'm only making one motherfucking trip. My man, I knew we were fucking pals I'm from only the making get-go. one motherfucking trip. Even when I was lived by myself before, and I'm hooking 15 them in bags. Everything, you hook I, them in it. I think that's. I think I got trigger one. fingers in my future. I've gone. <laughs> yeah. I've been so stoned leaving <laughs> Ralph's at 2 a.m. after doing an open mic yeah. at the store, and <laughs> for whatever reason, 16 jars of pickles, and I spaced them out in the bag. So I'm just doing <laughs> fucking bicep curls <laughs> yeah. on the way up. And I remember people would walk by me, scream across the street, "Do you need help?" And you get so just like filled with ego to where you're just like, "Hey, I gotta make it." it becomes a personal challenge when you're stoned. It becomes like an extra like stony baloney challenge where you're like, "Oh." You can't carry 15 bags while you're this high? No, of course I can. So, dude, I've for I mean, I've jammed all my fingers from basketball. It's coming, dude. I um I I always want to carry all my bags up <laughs> and I fucking uh <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I was just going to tell you. Now you're talking about putting the pickles in there. Oh. <laughs> I was just telling my my friend Jen this. So, I when I first got a motorcycle in my 20s or whatever, I hadn't been used to having a motorcycle. I've always had a car. Well, my dumb ass I drive to the grocery store and I grocery shop and then I walk out with like six bags. And I'm like, fuck, I got a motorcycle, bro. Okay. 
<laughs> so, First of all, love that you had a motorcycle. Again, I had a little FZ 600, a little Yamaha, like just before the FZR, a little Amazing. dually headlight. Yeah. Uh, was never comfortable on it. Didn't really like it. Couple falls? No, I never fell. Um, wait, I'll tell you. So I get, <laughs> I get the grocery bags on the handlebars. I'm like, fuck this. I'm riding home Shut like this. I got to go about two miles. And I'm just doing like 25 with <laughs> my feet down, you know, off. The, man, I'm trying to balance the groceries. Oh, all my up. God. Um, I never wrecked. I did lose the ASM one time. I was lucky enough to, to write it. Uh, but I watched my brother wreck in front of me. It was uh, at the time, it was my girlfriend, me, and my younger brother. And my twin brother yeah. is driving a motorcycle in front of me. We're all going to some like cookout or whatever, and he's just riding a motorcycle, and we're following him in the car. And it had rained the night before, and we've got a lot of country roads in Maryland that that there aren't shoulders. You know what I mean? Just yeah. grass right yeah. there, and a bunch of dirt, like loose gravel, had <laughs> gathered. And he took this turn and just boom and dropped right in front of us, cracked his fucking. Head. But he had a helmet on everything, but he had shorts and t-shirt, so he ripped his body all up, and his he- his handlebars turned like he had to ride home. <laughs> Like this, like 10 miles an hour, hey, 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 all the way home like that. He couldn't come to the picnic. So, <laughs> he couldn't come to the picnic. He couldn't come to the picnic, dude. <laughs> but the reason, not only that the reason, but I've never felt weaker in my life. There's a few moments, but I shouldn't say, but this is one of them when you're going 75 miles an hour on yeah. the fucking beltway, yeah. and you're right here next to that little floating disc going an 18-wheeler, and it says, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, oh, no, fuck that. This is how it's going to end was like, with a fucking mind. broken marinara s- spilled down my <laughs> chest or whatever you had in that bag. <laughs> Something important. My ragu. My ragu. My ragu is all over me, At the crime scene, someone's got a t- someone's like, did you taste it? <laughs> I don't know if he's dead or not. Did yeah. you taste it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so... So a motorcycle, uh, that was, is that kind of indicative of that era for you? Like 20s, like just throwing darts, like kind of living a little free. This is pre-kid, obviously, great right? question, yeah. I Because um, a motorcycle to me just, like I saw Alonzo Bowden last night and somebody goes, did you ride here? And he goes, fuck yeah. And I'm just like, wow, he's still, and he, I think he's been doing it for like 30 years maybe. Now out here, I would never do it. Yeah, that seems risky. Um the splitting the lane thing is insane mm-hmm. to me. I, I mean, look, I, I still have an M1 on my fucking motorcycle, my driver's license for motorcycle, but I've been guilty of lane change looking as I change. I've yeah. been guilty of it. God forbid some fucking, and especially a cop or something's flying across yeah. your fucking hood. You know, you're killing somebody. So I don't know. I've never, I, I've never been in a hurry to get somewhere like that. You so, know what I mean? To, to split lanes like that. So I would never do it here, but... I wouldn't say it was indicative of me. I'm not the, um, I don't care about going fast. I, I'm just, you know. Never have. I don't care about You never this. like, a, you know, no. go to Dave and Buster's and get on, you know, Gran Turismo or the motorcycle. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, some certain kids even that you can That's tell. That's not even a close comparison <laughs> to being on the freeway next to an 18 wheeler. Next to some nine year old going, can I go next? Can I go next? That's not scary. <laughs> I've been like, as a, as a kid, you know where you get that That's need? That's fun, yeah. You, need, you, you have a need for speed, and like yeah. I feel like it's almost like you can tell the kids that, the daredevil kids that, that are all about that, the same like the ones that played Duck Hunt that would like, I used to press the gun a, a next a, a, a close to the TV to kill the ducks, mm-hmm. and then I had buddies that would literally like peer behind the couch and be like, <laughs> and I was like, that guy's going to sh- shoot shoot up something. And so, uh, but so like with the, uh, with the motorcycle world, it's just like, I feel like it's always, you know, either a phase like it, it was yeah it was my father always told us we couldn't have one as long as we lived under his roof and then he died and he wasn't under that roof anymore so we're like we're gonna get a motorcycle got a used one but he had told us horror stories about him you know and and i think it was a bit of him saying you can't he dies i want to rebel yeah and also my brother and a few other friends were getting them too so i was either riding theirs or on theirs and i was like oh, i want to be a part of this and then as soon as i got out there i was like i do not want to be a part of this oh shit nah i didn't give a fuck give me a little bass boat i'd rather be out on a boat that's your vibe watch <laughs> a little fucking 10 miles an hour out there was I don't that give the, a shit. were those the the ducks that were yeah, excited or that hunt. was the that was we the horn? duck hunt, bro. <laughs> Do you really? No. No. That was your call back. Yeah. To your yeah, I know, but I also, you also look like a guy that would maybe duck hunt. <laughs> I've <laughs> never said that about anybody. 
<laughs> you and I just eat lunch. Like, look at this motherfucker over here. Looks like he hunts ducks. <laughs> there's guys that feed ducks, and there's guy that guys that shoot ducks. <clears throat> you do have a, uh, you do have strong ties to Maryland, which I love. I feel like you and I rock our cities pretty hard. hard. I agree. I'm envious of you throwing out your first pitches. I've been oh, asking yeah. the Orioles. Listen. Bro. How in the That's fuck your you Orioles turn cam. me down? That's your Camden camp. You're in the last place. <laughs> yeah. You need some sort of a boost. I'm offering. I'll pay to for to come home, That's see what my I'm family, saying. and fucking throw one out for you, Baltimore. I, you know what I'm going to do? Go. I gotta, I, there's got to be some sort of ties between the Seattle uh, first pitch people and another. they got to know, just like in our business, knowing yeah. other comics oh, across the coast. You, you, you want to throw out Milwaukee? Yeah. <laughs> I know the first pitch guy in Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. they got to know <laughs> each other. Job. Maybe they got so meetings fair. or sleepaway camps. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm pumped, man. <laughs> yeah, we got an opening on August 31st. Yeah, I can't do that. Would you, would you want to, uh, would you, there's pressure that comes with the first pitch that I didn't realize until I saw, I think it was 50 cent throw one, the Mariah Carey, then Fauci's was pretty bad. Uh, but Listen, also, you know me, dude, I'm going from the rubber first of you all. You have to. And I did I'm the first go time practice too. before I go do that. Yeah. I'm not going to be the egomaniac that thinks I could walk up there after I haven't done this in forever and still throw one all the way over the plate. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> um, like I, I kicked a field goal at Nebraska when I was out with Segura on a tour right before um, COVID hit. Yeah. We were in Nebraska and they were like, "Yeah, our, our fucking kicker's been missing." I go, "From where?" They're like, "Right here." And I was like, "I can bang that." And they're like, "You can't hit that." And I was like, "Put it up." I put two through the uprights. Listen to me. Cold off the bus. I was what? 46. What? No stretching, no nothing, and put two right through the uprights. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Because I can't hit him past 35, 40. That's why. <laughs> Guys, I am money. If you got need Inside a chip of shot, 40, yeah. I got y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It ain't gonna be pretty either. It wasn't like way up here. It was like oh, uh, barely yeah. sneaking over. Yeah, I don't know about barely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. Yeah, that is – those types of sports, you know, I guess they're fantasies, dreams. You know, if you are a diehard sports fan like we are and you get into this business, I mean, the who was the first person in any, I guess, sport that you got to be – because now, I mean, dude, I just saw, you know, from you and, and Tom's uh, tour, like, kicking with Burrow <clears throat> and um, – fuck, there was all – Tom, was, but yeah. Yeah, but you're a part of the, you're a part of the magic it's and there's – fun, yeah. Yeah. Um, who was the first in that world that you met because of what we're doing? And you were like, wow, dude, oh, like there is a mutual respect that I didn't realize from people that don't do what we do. I would say to really get to know and get close with probably Orlando Brown Jr., uh, <laughs> who used to be with the Ravens, yeah. guys with the Chiefs. Uh, he came to see Tom at, uh, at a show in Maryland, and then um, he came backstage. And I'm just a huge fan. And I'm also... Like I am a very I'm a football fan, but I'm a I really love Baltimore sports. Mm. So I know my shit when it comes to Baltimore sports. And I just I'm standing next to him, and I'm just like, "Can I say something to you?" He's like, "Yeah," <laughs> and I go, "How fucking amazing is it that you are a Baltimore kid, and you grew oh, wow. up on the fucking sidelines of the Baltimore Ravens? You get drafted by the Ravens, the team your father plays with." Your father fucking dies. You play his position. They still have some of his old equipment that they let him son wear. Get out of here. Yeah. And I was <clears> like, <throat> dude, that is like outside of Cal, it's you doing that in Baltimore sports. It's insane to do that. And he was like, I know it's he, like it doesn't hit him that same way until you talk about it with him. He's like, I know it's fucking crazy. I'm like, you were you knew Ozzy Newsome when you were like nine. Wow. You know, it's amazing to me. So I would say. Um, that was him special, yeah. and Burrow was really fucking cool, um, but I, I'd say Orlando. Yeah. So that this tour with Tom has been, bon I mean, like I remember you posted one thing where you were like, "I was just in, I want to say Kansas City, at, or, or you know, uh, doing shows, and now on a helicopter to go." Like that's just, yeah, it's he took us. So if you don't know, California, talking about Tom Segura, by the way, not yeah. Tom Selleck, right? Tom who also Segura. tours just in so, yeah, and I different go out markets. With him a lot. I go and out Sigler him is a lot. splitting time with Tom. A lot. A lot in this <laughs> helicopter, bro. I was like, you got to put the stash back, bro. You got to put it back. The cop. I imagine a Tom Selleck helicopter has a big stash on the front, <laughs> like that's the bumper almost, yeah. or maybe the wings <laughs> just are stashes. Selleck on the side. 
There's only one Selleck, bro. <laughs> That's what he says when anyone hops aboard. They go. <laughs> and when you're meeting them at the um, at the landing, or is it the landing? The airport? The airport, yeah. yeah. Why did I say landing? I'm not sure. So when you're meeting them. <laughs> well, no. So when you're, maybe he wasn't flying with us. <laughs> when you're meeting them there, he goes, uh, you go, which one is it? He goes, you'll know. You'll know, bro. There's a stash on. There's only one Selleck, and one it Selleck. says that on the outside. Uh, all right, so this tour. So, you know, Tom loves to have fun and and loves to treat you you know it, it's well, loves to treat you you guys have been homies for what we have 15, but he's 20? very good and generous to so many people right. like when you he did a race car thing in vegas and he had his um physical therapist and her husband came out and he wow. took care of it and stuff wow. i mean he's just he's great awesome loves to share loves, what he's created loves it right. yes and uh, i mean but also what fun is it to do all that by yourself no, right none. that's what you want to do with yes. your friends that's why we're here yes. and and i say all the time like comedy is a solo sport we don't get to see each other unless we're running into each other in fucking airports. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw Mark Marin flying home on that trip. I just saw Adam Ray coming in. I'm seeing you coming out. Fucking amazing. And then we saw my daughter and I were going to Ocean City, Maryland. Annie Letterman had just landed and was going home and came over and said hello. And I'm I'm telling Stella, like, that's how this wow. is where you see comics. Yeah. So to be able to hang and, I know. and have fun. Yeah. So um, I'm like, all right, you know, we're doing Riverside, which is a little over three hours in traffic. I think it was three and a half right. in traffic out of Santa Monica. So he goes, I got us a private helicopter. I'm like, of course you did. So did he I say it casually that. or is he like yeah. pumped? Is he like, no, Tom, does, Tom keeps it all right here, you know? Um, and I go, um, we get there and I'm looking at the fucking <clears throat> engines cause I'm not getting on anything with one engine. I, I, I was like, I'll get in the car right now. Or one sure. pilot, by the way. I don't even know if they're allowed to do that. Are they allowed to do that? I think... Fuck that. There's, yeah, to one pilot? Oh, yeah. I took a small prop plane uh, from Portland to Seattle once to make a show, and uh, my buddy hooked it up because he worked for the company. He goes, do you want one pilot or two? I go, I can't believe you even I fucking asked four. me that. Yeah, four, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much for a baker's yeah. dozen? <laughs> I, fucking... I want a crew of pilots and doctors. <laughs> okay. I want a fucking plane full of fucking professionals towing another plane that I'll be on, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, dude. So um, it's smaller than I think. Oh, God. I would say this little foursome that we're sitting in here Get is probably here. tighter. It's probably a little tighter. Knee to knee. You would touch knee to knee. And um, I'm like, Phew. but it's one of those things like this is terrifyingly awesome. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we take off. And you feel it. They tell you, you know, those Santa Ana winds out there, man. It used to blow my car around on the ground with the full tank of gas. Oh, yeah. You know, you're going to feel it a little bit on the way down. Like, I hate when pilots say that shit, you know? Yeah, don't give and, me a uh, heads up. Just when it happens, let yeah, me know it's all good. This is what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long is it going to last? That's what I want to know. <laughs> 20. I'm like, putting you on. I'm, like, I'm going to run my set in my head. I'm going to run my set in it's, my head. I know where 20 is. <laughs> We're at 18, guys. We got, we got the light. I just <laughs> wrap this turbulence up, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, but we got there. Three and a half hour ride. We got there in 25 fucking minutes. <laughs> I mean, there was nothing like it. It's How fast does, does a helicopter it, I go? I don't know, but it hauled ass. And we flew right over that traffic. You're looking down at like, look at that shit. Was it comfy or were you nervous? I was nervous but it was still nice it's just different turbulence it's it drops you know what i mean it's not the da -da 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 steady gug -gug 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 -gug. it's more of the you know you're moving like this and oh you know, god like, dude kind of like swaying a little bit almost like uh, a boat on the sea yeah like uh, it's everything in me not to say put it down just take it down guys <laughs> yeah get down Dude, we've all been in those moments where you're just like, fuck it, I got it. Like, I've definitely been on planes where I'm like, I am one more bump away from just hitting the call button, storming the cockpit, and be like, fellas, I've had enough. Yeah. I say all the time, I had to go. I, I was <clears> never, <throat> I used to love to fly. Love shooting down that runway and getting up in the air. Felt like a fucking rock star. And then my daughter almost got hit by a car. It caused crazy anxiety. And two things, fear of heights and fear of flying all of a sudden just pop up. I talk about like... You think that for years you don't have anxiety, but it's not that it's not. It's just laying down there in a hammock waiting for you to call, you know, get oh, their yeah. number. Just call. wake it up. That's it. Like, I'm up. And then you're up. And I got scared to death of flying. I'm like, I have to beat this. I have to. I have to fucking fly to live and work. I have to beat this. So I did. I can sleep on flights and everything now. But for a minute there, it was like, and I, but you have to rationalize. Like, I know I can't get up and walk in a cockpit and be like, guys, move the fuck over and then fly it myself. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I can do that with a car. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can do that with other yeah, things, yeah, yeah. but you're at the mercy of that motherfucking person that day. Do you ever make night. small talk with the pilots? 
Not usually. I got if a problem open, with doing that. I got they got a foot up or some bullshit. I'll be like, how you doing? That's it. How you I, doing I, is normal. I, that's it. I'm not small talking. You, you get the fuck in there and get focused on those gadgets. No shit. Yeah. Hit, like, and I always look in and I see them hitting buttons. Part of me feels like they're just doing that because they know you're looking in, so they they want to make you feel like that. They're like, we got it, man. Yeah. You saw me hitting these buttons. But also, when I get a little too high and I peer in, I always like I said one. I, I go. I go. Uh, what I say? I go. Uh, I go, I go, don't crash us today, fellas. All right. You we got really plenty. said that? I go, and I go, we got plenty of diet oh Sprite. I go, I got God. cotton mouth. I was so big. <laughs> One of them laughs. And then uh, and then I went back to my seat, and uh, my buddy was like, why you talk to the cockpit? And I was like, yeah, you're right. I was like, the door being open doesn't Let mean. Let me go up there and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I feel like I got off to a rocky start with y'all. And you know what? <laughs> when we're cruising out, too, I'm going to come back up. <laughs> Check it on you. As soon as that seatbelt sign goes off. <laughs> yeah, the cockpit door open doesn't isn't them saying, Hey, come on in and make it weird for a minute, you know? Yeah. Uh but I just I just I <laughs> like to I like to fly high. Speaking of me too. Speaking of making it weird for a minute, I've told this a million times, <laughs> but uh, there was one time I fell asleep on a plane. I'm going east. It's you know, five and a half hour flight or whatever, and um I don't know I'm asleep. But I see our plane start to go down. And I'm talking about my point of view. We are tilted nose down. You're in a dream? I don't know it. And we're spiraling. And I just go, oh! And I wake up. And the whole fucking plane is staring at me. And I'm just like, (laughs) And I have a hoodie on. I pull it all the way up. I look at my watch. We're an hour in. I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) And I just lean against the window and cover myself. Yeah, you can't even get up to I didn't, leave. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even get up. Because everyone's going to be like, there's that I don't guy. Want there's that guy freaking freaking yeah, you can't ask for anything on that flight Dude, except for I acceptance. I screamed out loud. <laughs> like, we're going down screen. Fuck you know, dude. I gave it everything I had. And we, that woke me and apparently a bunch of other people up around me. At least you were in the uh, the window. Being in the middle and having a freak out. Then, <laughs> yeah, that would be worse. Yeah. I've definitely woken myself up from, from, uh, from sleeping with just a... Like, either it's a rock. Well, I recently had a whole thing on a plane where a guy, uh, you know, the, the TV screen that's on the seat in front of you. I don't know. What's your, give me uh, your impression of tapping the screen. Like, how how hard are you going? Yeah, that seems about fine. That's, yeah. that, I think that's what everybody does. Dave, what do you do? I don't even tap it. You even tap it. Probably yeah. go a little light, and then uh, then I get Dave's annoyed. Dave's like, them. TV's on seats. <laughs> what, what are you flying? Delta? Yeah, they got them now, Dave. And so this uh this guy in front of me i had bumped his seat because somebody was trying to put in their um luggage above me and kind of bumped me so i bumped his seat so i sit down and my fiance is like this guy in front of you just turned around like real angrily and i was like really she's like yeah did you hit a seat i think i was like yeah the bad guy hit me and i it was just collateral damage and she was like oh okay so i was like what a dick I was he like, gave you the turnaround. Yeah, look. gave you the turnaround. But I didn't see right it though. Here. Yep, and I didn't see. Yeah, yeah I didn't see it though. <laughs> it's an aggressive but move just on knowing the plane. that he did it, I'm already this guy's in, in the hole. He's on the shit list. I'm just waiting for something else. I can just smell confrontation. So now I start kind of trying to get my, uh, you know, find the uh, the game or, or see, you know, maybe I want to watch, um, you know, North with Elijah Wood was like in the deep cut comedy section, and um, and I start tapping, and the guy, I just see him re- reading, reading something, and I just see him go. And I was just like, whoop. And so I was like, and I kept tapping. And then he just goes, you want to just stop? You're just, <laughs> you're just doing, yeah, yeah. yeah you're just doing, who hits it that hard? And I was just like, and I kind of look at it and she's just like, yikes. And now I'm just like, all right, this is almost like a heckler to show. I want to kill it with kindness and try to make it funny. And I lean forward. I go, I go, sir. And I'm just whispering through that little crack. I yeah. go, sir, I realized the, uh, Traveling these days is getting everybody all in a tizzy. You're stressed. I could feel it on the plane. I heard you did a turnaround stare before I even sat down. I go, there's a lot going on. If you want to fight in the bathroom, just let me know. <laughs> ah, man, it starts hitting me. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I go, you want to fight in the bathroom? I go, I've never been in one. It's a pretty tight space. I feel like we become better friends at the end of it. And I'm just going this little rant. He's just not looking back. And I was like, I was like, I was tapping the normal amount. I go, I don't know what's going on with you or what happened prior to this flight. But maybe fucking order a cocktail, <laughs> relax. I go, hey man, like I already can tell that you're gonna recline at a speed that's too fast for me. But I'm gonna fucking let it go because that's what you do on a flight. I'm just like spitting all this out right in between the seat, and then the uh, flight attendant comes over. And are he, you in the air? Oh yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, we're in the air. So there's no turning back, nope. which is even weirder. Like <laughs> taking it down. Yeah. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So flight attendant comes over, and and I just see this guy start complaining. So like, he starts doing this, and I, and I can see the flight attendant going like, oh really? Like just has no time for like, oh he's tapping your. TV too hard. He looks at me and he was just like, gives me a face like he's I'm, he's on my side. And the guy gets up and moves seats, 
And then he uh, and then he comes back when we're getting our bags at the end of the flight, and, and my fiance's like, "Don't say anything." I'm like, "It's fine, it's fine." And he comes back and he's grabbing his bag, and I just look at him and I take my headphones off. I go, "Hey," I go, "It's gonna be okay." <laughs> That's great. That's it's almost like when you wave when someone like in road traffic, rage, they flick you off. They're going like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. I cut people off and thank totally, you. Yeah. I used to do that shit all it's the time. It's the best. Yeah, if you do. And they would lose. And drives them even crazy. And, oh, they're going crazy. So like, I just go, you. it's going to be okay. And he He'll goes, be doing this too. No one wants to hit you, kids. Yeah. Thank you. No one's going to hit you, kids. That's what he would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to hit you. It makes people irate when you just don't meet them halfway. People want that. Did he say anything to that? He just goes, what? I go, hey, it's going to be all right. I go, everything's going to be fine. And then he just, uh, that made him more angry, and he grabbed his shit and stormed off. And this guy looked like, he looked like it was, he looked like he was a roadie for the Chuck E. Cheese band. <laughs> ah, that's a great And that he story. just found out that, like, the tour had been canceled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Post-COVID. Yeah. So it was like, I thought we were getting things back on schedule. And they were like, turns out a lot Rhode of Rhode venues- Island's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> he just got that yeah, news before the TV got, tab. On the yeah. way. He's <laughs> yeah. on the way there. What do you mean the raccoon's sick? <laughs> oh, well, so yeah. I'm supposed to get another raccoon drummer, and in, in, I'm, I'm in the air, Dave. I got some fucking Jewish guy tapping the TV. Oh, yeah. Uh, do, you, um, do you love the road? I love seeing the people and yeah. performing for the people. Your Honeydew fans like are diehard and, I feel like, come out in. Man, I'm very lucky yeah. to have the fans I have. Well, you've built it. Yeah, they're great people. They are. And the other thing, they come out and see other people. And then people oh, yeah. come to me like, I had oh, all the time. handful of fans come to see me from the episode or whatever. So I do love the road in the sense that I love stand-up comedy and I love performing for the people. Um, I also, little flex, I like letting people who've never seen me do stand-up know that I'm not just a podcaster, that I can do a fucking hour, you know, a real hour. That does happen. And sell yeah. tickets. Oh yeah, dude. and sell out some shows. You've always been a gay. So too, from the so. first time I saw you, I feel like I almost feel like I saw you do an hour the first time. I don't know where. I know at the at the lyric, uh, not the uh, not the lyric. The um, where was the uh, the old jam? The not uh, it was the lyric, not the Silver Lake lyric, but the lyric on La Brea. Yes, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I ever did an not, hour, no, there. not there. The, there was oh. even a small. Oh, oh yeah, the, the garage, unknown, the, the unknown, unknown theater. You're right. It was the garage. Yeah. I swear to God, I feel like I saw a real long set from you there once, and uh, and was just like, oh, I, I'm I'm bad. Uh, <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> this guy's fuck up, fucking dude. crazy. But it's nice. It's nice that they come out and they go, oh, this guy can do more than one thing. Isn't it crazy that you've got podcast fans that don't that just that know don't you know. from that and mm-hmm. love you from that, but and and you're like, I'm doing all these shows and they're but they. Just don't connect the dots until they see it live, which, yeah. by the way, is an entirely different beast. Completely. Right? Completely. What do you, do you feel like they are kind of, um, they work uh, in tandem, yeah. though? I mean, yeah. as far as, do you feel like your stand up has grown from your podcasting and vice versa? Oh, no doubt. My stand up uh, shifted completely once we started podcasting because all of us would sit there and it's like, are you talking about it on stage? No, you need to. <sighs> you need to. You need to. And then, People end up taking, uh, Jesselnik just hit me up and said, how many people from your podcast end up taking stories and turn them into bits? I'm like, people take, turn them into closers. I know Rory Scovel did one because um, he's like, I want to take one of these bits and turn it into a story. I'm like, yeah. you should. You should. Well, the content. one I did with uh, the last one, Honeydew, I did um, about my stepmom passing. I mean, like there were three or four stories oh. in there that you were tagging up that just me- that were so funny that uh, that, I, you know. You know what I, I do, laugh you know? about all the time is uh, <laughs> the one guy that what was what he, he wanted to play basketball with it. What do you call it? Uh, basket shots. Your basket shots. And he was a glass blower. We were joking. I'm like, this motherfucker's got a crack windshield, man. I <laughs> you, you're a glass blower. You got a crack windshield. Well, I think about that one a lot. Really? Man. Yeah, that, made me that laugh was so hard, so man. Stupid. That was unbelievable because so you know, for people who who aren't subscribed to the Honeydew, I mean, break it break it down. You're you're. With so highlighting many, the low lights, you which, know. Yeah, we. You, well, with so many podcasts out there, I just feel like it's really. It, every time a new one pops up, you're like, "Well, what is your hook? What's the angle? It can't just be, you know, a, a, a chat show, or maybe it can. I mean, like there are ones that that um, you know sustain that with just you know the guests and who who started the pod, I guess. But like, when did you decide that that was going to kind of be the uh, the angle of it? Is is man, highlighting the low lights? It's. It's a great question because uh, when we were ending the cra- the craft feast was something I didn't want to end. Um, you and Jay Larson, yeah, yeah, and it came to an end. Um, and that last five months of 2018 was crazy because I had to 
successfully, um, my goal was to close out a successful podcast, hopefully start a new successful one. And at the same time, I wanted to make sure I got an album out because I didn't want to lose that audience in case we went to zero. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, now I just fucking wasted all this time building an audience that uh, I can't even promote this new album. Right. You know, so I didn't know at first. I, I bought shit a half a dozen or more dot coms uh, i right. tried a bunch of different names i googled shit it was already taken you know all that stuff and um then one night i was sitting in a diner and um you know they, that fruit cup comes with your fucking plate and it was all just like honeydew and red grapes and shit <laughs> and, you know i don't even like red grapes but i ate everything except for the honeydew red grapes are the bar peanuts of the diner i agree i agree there's and a lot of hands in them. Lot. Nobody really wants them. No, nah, but like, what I'll, else you got? <laughs> but I don't have, you know, a, a passion for hating honeydew. I just don't fuck with honeydew. Yeah. It's just a watery fruit that's only good, a, you know, a small window of the year. <laughs> and um, I got up, and as I'm leaving, I'm seeing honeydew across all the tables. And I'm like, you know, this is a perfectly good fruit that most people just fucking throw away. And then I was like, oh, my God. That's who I am in life. I'm a, I feel like I'm a perfectly good person, but my mother's thrown us away. My uncle has thrown us away just again and again and again. And I'm like, huh. So then I started thinking about like how I could take that and I just see Instagram nonstop and Sports Center nonstop. And I'm just so sick of everyone's highlights. And I was always, and you might appreciate this, I was always a fan when we would go to the ball games of the bloopers. Loved. And I looked at I used at to it, rent those VHS of, like, saying. top MLB 101 bloopers. So fun. And that's what I'm saying. Like, here are these great players that have these moments. All we're ever seeing are the fucking home runs, the great plays, the great... Why don't we talk about what the fuck's really going on behind all this shit Love and that. i just said you know hi let's highlight your low lights instead of your highlights who cares about all the great shit you're doing let me hear how you got there what did you overcome what adversity have you dealt with to get you to where you are and who you are and then fuck dude that's an amazing uh story it's hot in here yeah you all right do you want to turn the air on <laughs> you don't have to turn it off but can i get a napkin yeah <laughs> we can turn it on too if it's give too me a hot. preacher call you got a preacher rack? <laughs> Give me a pastor. Yeah, there we go. There, there we go. go. Yeah, good. Do you want AC on yet? No, let's turn. Let's turn. Up your you can audio. always turn it off and post like the, the, the noise and all that. Whoever's now he's there. telling us. For real? Yeah, you can just ask him. Yeah. To turn off the AC and post? Yeah. How come he never told me that? He's like, what? Just got to do this. Maybe they, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Eddie. <laughs> Click this button right here. Uh, yeah. So we can get rid of that in Woo! post. Yeah. Great. Then let's leave it on. Yeah. That feels way fucking better. And it's white noise. Do you sleep with white noise? Fuck yeah. Me too. Every night, a fan. So even on the road, I'll take a, I got an app that says it's a fan, but doesn't sound like a fan. I've had some <laughs> <laughs> It's just a guy going, Sickle, even, you're the man! Even my, <laughs> yeah, you're the man, it's my, dude! It's my laugh ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> that, but, I mean, your laugh is a ringtone, no? Yeah, I did. I sold it as a ringtone. Well, people kept asking me to do it forever, and I was just like... All right, I'll do it, and I, I, it's out there. It exists as a ringtone. Two best la- laughs in comedy, Ryan Sickler, Josh Wolf. That's Thank my, you, It's my opinion. I appreciate that. I know there's others out there. Honorable mentions. Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer, Gervais. I'll throw him in there. Who? Ricky Gervais. <sighs> Great laugh. Wow. People forget about Great him, laugh but he's the one that got hated first for it, I feel like. Ricky did? Paved the way for idiots like me. Uh, have you always laughed like that? Yeah. In elementary I, school, do you remember like when you would pop off on something, just people would go... It was infectious, you could tell? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people would be like, I don't even know what the fuck you're laughing at, but I'm laughing now. But my stomach, like, when I get it, when it gets going, dude, the best laughs are the laughs you're not supposed to have. You know, when you're, like, when we were kids and we were in church and you're not supposed to laugh and you're, fu- or, or you're in school and you got in trouble, oh, but dude. your best friend's right there. Speaking my language. And all you can do is out of the peripherals see that just a little tremor, <laughs> that person trying to hold it in. And nothing makes me no, laugh harder I know, I do. <laughs> than watching you suffer trying to hold it in. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, I'm getting them. And then as a comic, too, you know. And you do great crowd work. I watch your shit. You know when you got somebody on the fucking ropes and yeah. you're like, I want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to fucking take your foot off the gas. No like, way. I'm going to oh, give yeah. this motherfucker a heart attack Oh, yeah, right dude. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing like that. Wait, so um, 
Okay, we were, we were talking about... Um, the highlight and the low light. Yes. And so you have to... And when did I know? First of all, that story is incredible. And I think what's brilliant about it is that you... To, to, to embark on a uh, conversation where you're really having people get vulnerable with... I mean, dude... I just watched some clips with Sal Volcano. Man. Incredible, dude. I mean, it's and the, and then it, the Swartz and ones. Even Harland got real deep, like I, I haven't seen before, which I love. And it's like people now know that they're coming to your show for that. But and what I'm building to is that you have to just trust that you are, uh, you know, enough and funny enough to not have it be dark and uh, morose and and um, just a. Uh, uh, to where it gets so heavy to where it's not a comedy podcast listen and you're I, brilliant at that the, you. the best i would say because you get you listen and you uh you don't interrupt like i'm doing right now and but you uh but you just you let please, please continue you fill <laughs> you fill the plate and then you uh you take bites off it there's a better analogy but you um you just make people feel good and, and comfortable to share everything but then you also like with sal in that clip he got real serious and then s- and then I think he just stopped and goes, this can't this be entertaining. Can't be entertaining. <laughs> entertaining, yeah. And you start dying, and then you both went on a r- little riff. And that moment, I feel like, probably in the full episode, opened, I don't know where it was in it, but it feel those types of moments open it up to, okay, cool, we can get jokey and we can still have fun, and I don't have to like tell a, a sad story and, and be sad about it. Yeah, I thank you very much. It? Yeah, it's br- it's all. brilliant, dude. I, I appreciate it, and it's made me fall in love with comedians all over again because there's no one like us who can sit there and tell you a dark, twisted, sordid fucking tale, and then drop some of the funniest shit you've ever fucking heard. In yeah, there. N- nobody, does nobody. That. I talk to my cousins and stuff I'm like. They're just crying the whole time. Yeah, like, just sad. Where's the punchline? You know I mean? like, yeah. Where is it? You know? Yeah, people that aren't comics just tell sad stories. Mostly. And then you get those people, like I do my Patreon, the Honey Do With Y'all, where those people can tell a fucking story. And you can tell because they're very detailed about their trauma. So you've either been in therapy a bunch and talked about this, or you've told this story a bunch and talked about this. So Yeah, so there's, okay, so subscribe to the Honey Do on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Pods, and then Honey Do With Y'all is Patreon, which is at... It's five bucks a month only. There's no other tiers. It's fucking and if nothing. You sign up for a year, you get over a month free. It's called the Honey Do with Y'all, and I highlight the lowlights with everyday people. Everyday people that, hey man, and they have the craziest <laughs> oh, yeah. fucking story. I've watched a handful, and it's you just forget that like, hey man, everyone's got a story. You're at the airport. I get so goddamn curious when i'm watching anyone if i get a soundbite of a conversation or i see a little fight at a, at a fucking wolfgang puck or like there's a kid like f- getting yelled at at a boss at sabaro like there's just i'm like what's Sabara, going on what is yeah. it and that kid looks like he's it's really taking a toll i'm like dude what is going on with that like i just get so and you're basically getting these people and giving them a platform to tell these stories and it just makes you go like Gives you a deeper appreciation too for that, like, hey man, everyone's got something going Everyone. on, or had something, or or is going through it, or is going to go through it. And that's another thing. I always say it's the stories behind the storytellers, because that is what you're exactly what you're saying. Like, what's really happening in that dude's life right there? And the guy who flipped out on the fucking plane. Like, I know I joke about the Chuck E. Right. Cheese band, well, but what's like, what's really happening probably, over there, bro. dude? Who knows, man? Wife dying, I can't. Like, it could have been. Knows? Yeah, but I um. You know, I, I sat and talked to someone, and I was like, God damn, you haven't had anything. And then I just hit me like, bro, buckle up for the next 35, motherfucker. Oh, you're, both your parents are still here? You know, no one's died. Your grandparents are still here? Everybody's still here? Oh, 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 oh good luck in the next 35 <laughs> years, bro. It's going to be a rough one, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? That kind of shit. And, and I, I read this quote. I butcher it all the time, I'm sure. But it, it's something to the effect that they say if – if all of us stood in a circle and threw our problems in the middle, most likely you're taking your shit back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you could trade with someone and you threw yours in the middle, you're like, I think I'm going to take this shit back. And that's a really um, valuable lesson I've learned is, is, um, is that, is that like it could always be worse. You know, there's sometimes people come on and sit down. I'm like uh, to myself, I'm like, this, this is what the fuck you're bitching about, and this oh, is what wow. you're bringing. And oh, other wow. people, where I'm like, what am I fucking complaining about? Wow, okay. What am I bitching about? How do you balance that as far as the people where they're coming on and they're like, so get this, man. My ex didn't wish me happy birthday on Facebook. 
Oh, that's Monday. That's Monday. Those air, bro. Uh, those two, okay. Air. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's got to be more substantial. I mean, but we have been through it. Yeah. You just have to be comfortable talking about it. Have you always been comfy? And stop me if I'm asking just you know regurgitated questions. But have you always? I I don't. I think there's people, comics that have uh, from the get go been you know a, a form of a class clown or was able to chum it up with parents and teachers well, which I feel like is like a weird observation. But like I just tapped into that a few weeks ago where I was like. Somebody said, oh, you were always, like, good with my parents. And, I, and then it made me just go, I was good with most parents and teachers. Like, not that I talked to them like I was on the same level. Like, Mr. Burger, are you going to you know, hit the happy hour tonight? Maybe yeah, yeah. I look for some puss. You know, I was definitely, I was definitely, you know, getting sent in the hall a lot. But, like, not afraid. I don't know. Just felt like I could communicate like that. And I don't know if that translates to this. But you strike me as someone that's just been very comfy in your own skin from the get-go. Yes and no. I mean, okay. I, you know, everyone's insecure. I'm so, yes. I, I'll say this. The times I've been as comfortable as I could be in my skin, there are the flip times where I've yep. been the absolute most. Oh, you're a human being? Skin. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Right. Um, but I was never the class. I wouldn't call myself the class clown. I, I read this book one time, and it said um, it was like a stand-up comedy book, and the first page said, are you the class clown? And I was like, nope. And I flipped the page, and the second page says, or did you always know you were funnier than the class clown? And I was like, God. Boom. Whoa! I didn't need it. I didn't need whatever that kid needed with their dumb fart or whatever it was. <laughs> I didn't need that. I had hey real man, shit going on. <laughs> the timing was perfect. The room was quiet. Everyone <laughs> thought it was the girl with fangs, yeah, Jill Warren, who I ate her crackers one day because I was a fat kid, and she started laughing and said my brother <laughs> farted on those crackers, and I still ate them. That's how fat I was. I just chowed down fart crackers at two fifty three p.m. <clears throat> You're right. The, there was the fart, and there was the kid that my buddy could fart on cue, which I, it was always an amazing <laughs> thing. I'll never forget. His name's Matt Schilling. He still talk to him. I don't know how the fuck he did. I know how. I had a kid named Alan Christie who could do it. He could suck air in through his asshole and fart it out on command. <laughs> Shout out to Alan Christie. He's, so, Christie's Alan, now a firefighter. Don't don't <laughs> fart on him, bro. Don't fart on him. Uh, but he said to Becky Woodford one day, he goes, hey, Becky, can I get a crayon? She goes, no. And he goes, if you don't give me one, I'm going to fart. And she goes, go ahead. And I mean, Pfft. right on. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Wow. What a power. What a power. In middle school? Yeah, it's a superpower. Superpower. Were they, were they stinky? Or? I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever smelled a fart that wasn't. Yeah, dude. Uh, what? Really? You ever had to shut a blank? Yeah, not, those not, are, I don't, not out of this ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not out of this ass. <laughs> Is there a... <laughs> I also, I don't want to, I said this the other day, I go, I don't want to, if I get to a place where I find farts not funny, if I'm in an elevator and a fat kid lets one rip and I don't laugh or and I go like, oh, dude, just take, take me. me out. Yeah, that's take it. That's a wrap. Out. There's certain things like that where I go, I don't know what that equates to, but I think it's just a, it's a not taking things too seriously type of uh, mentality or, um, I mean, are you... Do you feel like you're pretty good at being like self-deprecating and like in in real life and like if you're in social functions and you need to, you can tell that things are pretty stale and you're like I, I'm gonna have to drive the ship on this circle of conversation. But you can also like, you know, that's what I do sometimes is like do the self-deprecating thing to kind of make people comfortable. It's what Brad Williams is brilliant at. He'll come yeah. into a room and make the little person joke right away so that people aren't you know just stocking up and about to unload on him uncomfortably. Right. Yeah. Which I've seen happen. I tell my uh, daughter all the time, I call myself a chooch or whatever, you know, it's jackass in Italian, but I'm always like, I'm, you know, I did, I let her know that I do dumb shit. You know, is I she let goofy? her know. Oh my God. My, my daughter is so fucking funny, man. Um, I don't want to tell this story cause I don't know if Tom's told it yet, but there was something happened in one of Segura's shows. Involving where, her? In Baltimore, no, where apparently a fan pissed over the balcony on people below. And it was, he said, mayhem. I'm going to see him this weekend and get the full details. He's like, you're never, I, he's like, something happened, text me at a show that's never happened. I was like, did someone die? He goes, no, but. Worse. Damn near. <laughs> and I guess this dude was wasted, got up, and just started pissing all over the oh people below. Oh, my God. And I'm telling my daughter. I'm like, you want to hear something crazy, Stella? She's how old? Seven. Great age to soak up comedy, I already dude. showed her Tommy Boy. We watch, we watch man. comedy nonstop. Family guy? She loves, her, give her some nah, edgy cartoons. A little that, too much. Yeah. She watches um, SpongeBob. Great. That's good enough. Enough comedy in that. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Boy's but, huge. Um, Tommy Boy she watches with me. And she's watched it a bunch now She like already. it? Yeah, loves it. I just wow. showed her Dumb and Dumber a couple weeks Favorite ago. Favorite movie of all time. She's fucking dying laughing. That's a great sign. Um, but she goes, I go, and the guy 
peed on people. And she goes, did anyone get it in their mouth? And I started laughing so fucking hard. I go, that's a great question. That's the first, it's the only question. I'm going to ask Tom. (laughs) I'm going to ask Tom. By the way. I'm guessing they probably did. (laughs) Yeah, because they're probably laughing at the show. And you're probably looking up when something hits you just naturally. You hear a mist. No one's going like, no no one's clothed. You're always like, huh? For whatever reason, you have your mouth open when you're. you're giving, oh my God, you're done. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I and the uh, guy apparently ran out and didn't get caught. Sh- no way. It's Baltimore too. Like it's he was long gone. People were peeing indoors all the time. And I've away never with it. heard of anything like that before. Man. That's a that's a level of drunk that I don't think I've ever been at. Where yeah. I don't have enough social wherewithal to know that like a don't take your dick out in public. B don't start peeing. C don't start peeing over a balcony <laughs> with a full crowd. With below. a full crowd. Yeah. Have you ever been shit on by a bird? Oh, yeah. I was just telling her about that the other day, too. I've been shit on by a bird a few times. And she's like, do people say it's good luck? And I just told her, I go, that's because <laughs> people make up shit to feel better when they get shit on by birds. Okay? <laughs> it's not good. I happy, go, you want to know, ha- you know what happened after that bird shit on me? Your grandfather died. Your great-grandmother died. <laughs> just start going through the list. Okay? So it ain't good luck. All right? <laughs> so always carry an umbrella <laughs> so you can be fucking trouble-free. <laughs> oh my god yeah there is a there's man th- sat that age of seven like asking it's if it awesome. got in the mouths yeah. is a great first question and also such a funny kid brain question yeah did you and get pee in your mouth did you drink pee and she'll tell me stuff too like the boy said this today at school and i go what'd they say and she's like i go you can say you won't get in trouble she'll tell me whatever the cuss word was or whatever she said that he said the jews run the banks right <laughs> I was like, listen, right. he's right. Yeah, yeah. But tell him not to say yeah. it. We got a handshake for that. That's a recess conversation. <laughs> I uh, last night she got me really good. I was laughing oh, so hard. She's got this book. It's a pigeon book or whatever, and it's uh, you know whatever second grade reading level yeah, for yeah. her. And she's reading through, and then on the back, she'll she like this got these little characters. She's like, where's the owl with glasses? I'm like, right here, because I have my glasses off and mm. I couldn't see that mm. well. She's like, where's this? I'm like, right here. She goes, where is the little raccoon with the big eye. And I'm, listen, I'm looking for five fucking minutes. And I'm like, here. She's like, nope. And she's dying laughing. I go, is this like a trick? Are you trying? She's like, no. I go, you're telling me it's on these two pages. And she's like, mm-hmm. And I'm looking. I get my glasses. I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking yeah, everywhere. Because yeah, yeah. we do these fucking spotted games and shit. I love you it. Know? And then finally she just goes, it ain't there. You just got pranked. And I started, like, screamed it at me. Like, I started laughing <laughs> so fucking hard. I was like, you little fucking asshole. Oh, my I'm God. I'm looking for five motherfucking minutes. It's 1030. <laughs> We're supposed to be going to bed, but I was my ego wouldn't let me do it. I was of like, course. I'm going to find And then I started laughing. I was like, go to fucking Go bed. to bed if you want. I'll wake you up when I find it. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Do you want kids? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Right now... No, but I think I, do you need to know? Do you need to know full on? Like, Mm-mm. I, I don't think you need to know anything. Yeah. I'm just trying. You're never going to be ready enough. Right. You're okay. never going to have enough money. You're never, you know, I'm say that because people say, well, I need to have more. Yeah, there's money. no perfect time. Right. Well, also like shit, kids are expensive. There is no perfect time, but here's yeah. the other thing. You are a hustler. So once you do become a parent, you're you're just gonna go it'll it'll you'll hustle in a just a different way i think that's what i need to get on board with because i know, think i'm i am worried that i you're a crazy hustler dude you, you're non-stop working and i'm non-stop. worried that that's gonna take a step i don't i've always been even getting into a relationship and now about to get married like that was even a big deal because worrying about and being uh having to be uh, accountable or check in with anyone other than me and be on my own not be on my own schedule which i've still been able to maintain more or less she's very supportive on that but but and it has made me slow down in ways that I do appreciate for sure, but um, but I feel You're like they, selfish. I feel You're, like I'd be all in on the kid thing so much that I, but I keep hearing what you just said no. from people where you're like you just find dude you, I'm a single parent yeah I have made it work the entire time yeah, I built have. my career every other you don't need to be out every fucking weekend anyway I go every other weekend when I don't have her yeah you know what I mean I'm yeah. home I'm there for sporting events I'm there for school i'm there for camp drop-offs and pick up on purpose because you can be you can create your own schedule in your own life what has it you just tell these people now nah. oh well we can't afford to pay you that because we're a family business great i'm a family business too and i can't afford to work for that so we're good yeah you can just create your own schedule what have you what has it done to you personally what has it done um 
being uh, a parent? Yeah. Oh. And what has it done comedy wise? Just give me like in each of those sex of your life, like you know, S E C T S. S E C T S. Yeah, yeah. How's being a single dad helped your sex life? It's not as good as you. Um. So life first, and then and then comedy. So life. I mean, that's it's. It's funny. All I ever wanted to be was a dad. You know, I had a great dad and I wanted to be a dad, but I also wanted to be the guy that was like, I'm going to wait for the right person. I want to make sure when I, <laughs> you hear where this is going. I want to make sure <laughs> when I do it, I'm, it's forever. I want, yeah. <laughs> Last of a year, bro. So <sighs> then I look back and I'm like, well, Jesus Christ, the way this played out, I could have just done this in my fucking 20s and been a young dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like these knees would have stood. My kid be in his teens now. I'd be yeah. good to go. Be coaching basketball. But it happens exactly how it's supposed to happen. It and um, it's made me, especially having a daughter, has made me, I really think, a better listener. Um, it's made me realize how I'm not a great communicator the way you think you are. Like I'll speak and she'll be like, yeah, but you just said this. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like everything is fucking, you know, like word for word. And you start realizing that as I say all the time, as a man that makes my living using words, I don't always say the right fucking thing. You know, people see a polished hour that's taken me a lot of time to yeah. say the wrong shit. Yeah. I don't, you don't get that in human conversation. No. You know, I'm like, let me come back in six months and let me tell you how I feel about that. And I'm doing 20 fucking, damn, 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 like, God damn, great point. I don't always drop them right no, there, of course you not. know. So um, it's made me more patient. It's made me more sensitive. Um, it's made me more scared. Um, but it's also, um, I say all the time, I love my life, you know. We got, we got the puppy. I got my daughter. Her brother's still very close with us. Cool. Um, and um, and then I get to go out and do stand up still, so it's it's definitely made me a better person. I mean, all around. Then I would think that all those things you listed immediately are, they're synonymous with comedy, where it's like, oh, I got more sensitive, I got more scared. You're just adding more to the vulnerable. You're adding more to the weak. Exactly, you know, all of it. All the to all that you said, self depreciate, uh, deprecating, depreca yeah. deprecating it. Yeah. All just add to the list because you need right like an emotional attachment to what you're talking about to be able to connect your shit to other people so that they can get on board with it. So if you are, have you, you've added all these emotional weapons to your arsenal. Like that's just probably opening uh, up other chapters of stuff to, but then also you do shit that's humiliating of and you're a fucking real person with yourself. So you just like, you know, I, you know, some of those people <laughs> like, nah, I'm never wrong. And everything. You're just like, man, that yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. As a dad move. So I, I was, um, my daughter goes, I picked her up after school a few weeks ago, and she goes, hey, can we go to one of the little neighborhood libraries? You know those things some people have in the neighborhood. It's like a little put a book in, take yes. a book out. It's yes. that they're like right by their mailbox. So I go, yeah, we pull up to this one. I go, oh, I thought you wanted to go to the other one down the street. She goes, what other one? I go, you know, the one a few blocks over there. She goes, can we go to that one next? I go, nah, we got a good book. This should be a life lesson. Let's just be happy with what we got. We'll bounce. Can we please go over there? I go, fine. So we pull over to this thing. I park, and the curb's here on my right, yeah. on the passenger side. And uh, there's this big-ass Santa Monica motherfucking tree with the roots that come up to about mid-shin, okay? But I'm parked right next to it. So I got this tree roots right up against the car, right? We, get a, we go to look at the books. There's nothing there. I open the door like a gentleman for my daughter. She goes to jump in. The dog hops in. I go to, un <laughs> I go to unleash the dog, and I go to take a step back. And I hit this motherfucking root. But I don't have time to turn around. I just, I started <laughs> tap dancing on that sidewalk <laughs> looking for Flappy, dude. And then when I realized it, I just yelled. I went, Stella, I'm falling. <laughs> and I mean, I heard her go, I heard her go, Dad. <laughs> and it trailed away because I went back so far. Oh. And at that moment, I was telling her, like, I got up. I felt hard as shit. Some ladies walking their dogs laughing, done oh. that, nothing. I get up, I'm laughing, I get in the car, I'm like, oh my God, Stella. <laughs> and she's dying fucking laughing. Yes. And she imitates me now. She does a Stella, I fall, and she does that oh shit. Oh my but God. I told her, I go, here's the thing, you don't know. Like at some point, I had to just give myself up to the gods. I didn't know if I was falling 40 fucking feet. I didn't know what I was going to hit. I just had to let it all happen. <laughs> and I did, and it fucking crushed my back. <laughs>
kicked the cross. Oh, no. Back. No. It fucked my back up. And then we're flying nonstop, so now I got to go get, like, a an epidural shot in the got fucking those. thing again because it, like, it pinched my nerve, and I, I, I had to sit on stage the other night. It's the first time I ever sat on stage ever, ever, because I couldn't stand longer than like five minutes at a time. How was it? You're such a great storyteller. I feel like that would be I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I right? enjoyed it. You're looking at the guys that do it. You're like, fuck, they're onto something. But I really like walking and and moving. It helps me think. Mo- movement helps me think. Do you like walk around the neighborhood and stuff and write? Yep, I hike and write too. Wow. Like I, I don't. I'm really. Uh, my mind's really. I, I um take my phone. I'll put it into the Me voice too. recorder and then yeah. go transcribe it later. Like I'm really. Are you especially a- when I hike? I'm very. I feel like an open channel a lot. Mm. And you and you, you like to. You feel like when you're doing that too, you're like less. Just you're not on your phone, so you're just like a little freer. You're not distracted by. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you write on stage when you do a little voice note into the phone? Is it just like a little idea and like I'll flush that on stage later? Or is it sometimes the whole bit right there? I do both. Yeah. I, I literally the other night I was like, all right, I got this set at the <clears throat> comedy store. And um, what I've been doing is chunking out like bits of my hour and taking them into different rooms there and trying to, you know, keep them and work on them. Just nice. keep hammering them. And the other day I sat and wrote a lot of shit that I used and some I didn't. But. But I really do feel like the best stuff comes um, on stage naturally. Yeah. And then you, hopefully you record it or you remember it. One thousand. Incorporate it. Yeah. Got to listen back. I don't. I'm not good about doing it every time, but but um, sometimes I'll. If something really sticks out, I feel like I got a pretty good memory to remember it. But then even like today, if a few things from last night, I was like, oh, I added like just a couple things here and there. Move about- this here. I did this first this time. You oh yeah. Remember all that shit. Um. Uh, like my nephew is seven and he head butts the fridge a lot and dry humps the couch to make me laugh and I go and at first of all I go I go, I open it where I go I go I can't wait to do I just rip this I go I can't wait to do drugs it was talking about smoking weed I go I can't wait to smoke pot with my nephew I go he's seven and I get to la- laugh I go but something about the way he head butt fridges and dry humps couch says drugs in ten years <laughs> ten years you know what I'm saying uh, yeah. where he just is like has such a zest for life but also like he just seems like he'd be fun to, uh, to get high with um, all right we're going to close this out with something, uh, a little way to get Ryan Sickler, to get to know Ryan Sickler a little bit better. Can I ask you something really quick? Please. This blonde character that you've been doing. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, thanks. Who is it, and why are you doing it, and <laughs> what is the inspiration for this person? Why am I doing it? I I mean, it's... A, it, is it something you're working on that we'll see later? Yeah, it's for uh, something else. Okay. And so anytime I get into you know a full prosthetic for something, like that's why when I've done the Dr. Phil stand-up uh things it's like if i get into a uh, full thing for that you know it takes three four hours then i i want to just maximize content uh, with it. dude i'm the same way yeah. i took i shot this promo in this white jumpsuit yeah and then i was like you know what i'm wearing it on segura's private jet the next day and I oh did, that was an I, amazing and picture. i took that picture so the promo that i shot before that it's about to come out just brilliant. promoting june shows where oh, i'm just walking brilliant with the fucking dog you yeah know? brilliant you, you, you got, I mean, you, got you, to maximize you have to. Yeah. And so that's why I was just like, let me see if I can get up on, on the store. What's his name? Bruce Robbins. Just a, just a real estate uh, guy yeah, from I, Dallas. I, I you know, my wife, Kendra, yeah. only cheats on me when she's out of, out of town. But so we have it worked out. We have an agreement, you know. Uh, <laughs> I love yeah, I, I mean, I, dude, I, it surprises me even to this day that I'm actually doing stand up because forever I just wanted to do characters all the time. I just felt more comfy. And it was before I actually had, had a point of view or SNL? a voice. Oh yeah, yeah, and so, but it was I. I just I w- I was more comfy with like I was even when I first got past at the store. I was still I was doing characters. I get in, you know I bring these. Uh, uh, if it was late night and Jeff uh, Scott R I P was there and I'd put on a I had a wig and a hat that I used from a sketch and like a lo- and a and a and a guitar and I would pretend to be this like old lounge singer and I would go if the crowd was just, like thirty people and I was up at twelve forty five I was like I'm gonna just do that tonight and riff and that was sometimes more fun but it was only because I hadn't yet found who I was on stage. Be- uh, because that seemed less fun, but I just didn't have a, uh, I don't know why I was talking about what I was talking about. You know, I just didn't have a, a take on anything, but um, yeah, I, I've done that. Sh- I mean, in preschool, man, I used to, there was a big, you know, um, case of like hats and coats and all that shit. And I was like one of two kids that would be like, I'm a fucking, uh, you know, Hey, I'm a Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, bro. You know, like it. just play pretend. Um, all right, I'm going to play James Lipton, R.I.P. James okay. Lipton, inside the R. actor's R. studio. We're going to do the 10-question questionnaire that Lipton did uh, with Ryan Sickler. I'm here with Ryan Sickler. Is this the actual 10 he did? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ryan, what is your favorite word? It's 
so funny. I know these questions too. I, I would have to just say fuck. It's, it's so universal and so, you know, use it usable. In, what's your favorite way to use it? Uh, angry or excited? Like the fuck angry. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Stop tapping on my TV seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your least favorite word? Genius. What turns you on? Great ass. <laughs> what turns you off? Terrible ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me give you yeah, another one. You can give a non-sexual answer. I will too. give you a non-sexual answer. It is uh, people who can dish and can't take. Oof. I fucking hate that. It's Maybe big, the best it's one of my biggest oh, pet peeves me in life. Too, you're man. gonna sit over there and bust balls and talk shit. Now it's our turn to give it back. You're gonna take <sighs> your ball home. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, dude. Maybe. Oh, dude. Yeah. I hate it. It's uh. It's, it takes a special type of person to think that it's a one-way street. Yeah. Nah, man. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah, uh, you fucking know who the fuck <laughs> you are. What, uh, what, is your favorite, uh, what is your favorite curse word? All right, so fuck was it. So how about what is your favorite <laughs> word? What is your favorite word? Now we know your curse word. My favorite word, I would have to say, ah, shit, it's tough. I would say believe. Hmm. Okay. What sound of noise do you love? My daughter's laughing. Amazing. What sound of noise do you hate? It's easy to say my daughter crying, so I'm not going to say that. Let me say... Good um, answer. What sound do I hate? It's a sound. Um, anyone saying I can't. Nice. You know, it was my high school yearbook quote. I try to make a joke and also be like inspiring. I'm a fucking loser. I put, thanks, mom, and I named some friends, and then I put, there's three words I hate. Can't, couldn't, and vanilla ice. <laughs> Good. Hey, where were you fucking 20 years ago, <laughs> it's man? It's there forever, man. <laughs> it's there forever. It's there forever. I remember people reading it being like, all right. All right. <laughs> I don't think mine was great at all. I don't even remember what don't it was. I remember, right? What a funny thing they make you so put they down. Care, you know it's like your mean? last thing. You're I'm like, like my dad died. Everybody's <laughs> dead. We don't have parents. Thanks for fucking looking out for us, counselors. I hope to be alive in five years. <laughs> all right. That's my fucking goal. Go Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> they were good, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Musician, I'd like to be a drummer. Oh, I would, yeah. I would love to figure out how to get all this nervous energy out oh, in, a, yeah. in an artistic way, other than humor. What type of band? Like Rock Hootie band. or My Chemical Romance? <laughs> Hootie, it won't know. be Hootie, bro. I, 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 I don't attitude. see me smiling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that kind of band. Like I'm in the monkeys or something. <laughs> <laughs> Nonstop smiling. Those guys were living on cloud ten. <laughs> yeah, they were. Well, uh, what pussy? <laughs> 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 what profession would you not like to do? These days, I would not like to be a police officer. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no doubt about it. No, military, they're a special breed. Like, I'm not. Tricky. Well, I'm not lining up to go get fucking shot at for somebody else's fucking beliefs. Yeah. Those what? people are like, I risked my life so you could believe that. I'm like, that poor bastard did. <laughs> he did. Yeah. I'm, I'm not that guy. I I'm good. No. You, it, think you, you think I'm going to go fight for the seat the tap guy? <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> I'm going to watch you get killed. <laughs> I'm going to help. <laughs> <laughs> if, he uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> Man, it's so funny. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'd be happy to hear you did good, you know. Um but I would love to hear him say, I fucking love the podcast, bro. You made me laugh out loud. I'd like to make God laugh out loud. Yeah, dude, right? That's what I would love. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't want to hear him say anything. If I'm going to hear something, I wouldn't want to hear God laugh. What if he did your laugh back to you? Oh, and it was just like, I'd be like, bro, send me back, man. He's like, I got the ring done. You on Android, guy? You on Android. That's, wait, that? that's what happens. He goes, I got the ringtone. And then you go, wow, dude. And then you just look down at the phone and you go, Android. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Uh, 
You're the best. This Thank was incredible. Thank you for having me on, for real. Uh, RyanSickler.com for all your tour dates. Yes. At Ryan Sickler on tour. All Ryan socials. Sickler on all socials. Subscribe to Honeydew if you're not already. Please. And Honeydew with y'all on Patreon, and we'll, we'll do and a- Check a, out Adam's episodes, for sure. You gotta dude, come back. I'm, I've created an outline, which I told you well, I would, and at some point, you'll be a producer on this, because I'm gonna make this probably after the wedding, and I settle down, and I can you know jump in on something like this, but that episode- uh, my second to last one of the honeydew is where I basically Sickler hit me up and was like, I saw this picture of you with your dad in the hospital, FaceTime and your mom. What's that about? And it ended up turning into this such a beautifully l- written thing. Looking too, yeah. back uh, at my mom's dating history, three dudes after my dad, which I'd never explored. And it's 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 a blueprint for a movie that and I figured out where I was like, I think I want to play in full prosthetic each of the boyfriends, maybe oh, in the movie. And then. It's kind of, and then you just see it through my eyes as a kid seeing post. It's just a, a, a slice of life movie where it's like that time because it is so, like, you know, it was so um, uh, important as far as like my growth as a, I don't know, comic, whatever. Or forming you as a person, yeah. a comic, all yeah. of it. You don't. You don't realize it until you look back on yeah. all of it. I'll never forget, I read this interview with Jamie Foxx where he said that his grandmother used to make him play piano every day after class or school before he could do anything. And he was like, and he hated it. And then he fucking wins an Oscar for Ray and he said, it, it dawned on me that the whole fucking reason I ever had to do that was for this right here. Wow. You know, so I, I do think if um, if you have a healthy outlook on the, tra- the traumatic shit, you can really make yourself uh, a good person 1000 percent. yeah uh you're the best you're a beast you're you, truly one of the best and um if you got a helicopter and you want ryan to join you as a plus one uh <laughs> i'd say just fucking just delete that text right yeah, now delete it all right good night everybody mm, zoa thanks rock Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is, click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes. And stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Oh, I don't know how to blink.